Meet the Idea Shapers, and today we go into more depth on the retort. So if you remember this guy from last week, uh, today we're going to dive a bit deeper on what is the role of text in our visual thinking. And I realized that I could borrow one of the 90 lessons in my big old core visual thinking course called the Agerbeck Method, which is your 90 day visual thinking transformation. And this is a representation of the nine modules over our 90 days. So each of these circles focuses on a major component of visual thinking. And uh, we start here with Canvas, move to proximity. Today, I'm gonna to share with you one of the lessons, the first lesson of the 10 days of text. And then we go color, line, scale, shape, image, flow, super robust course. And what I think is really important distinction with this course is that is it is sequential and very much step by step. So if you are interested in these skills and you're thinking this is way too complicated, how will I ever learn it? This is your guide. This is your very clear path through building your visual thinking skills. And um, there's another video that talks about how the, Ag the Agerbeck method fits with the idea shapers. Absolute overlap, different sequences, um, but both of them are really meant to be fantastic resources to see the entire picture of big thinking. Visual thinking, the big picture of visual thinking. That's what I'm trying to say. So I just wanted to give this quick intro to tell you where the heck the video is coming from that you'll see in a moment. And like I said, it is the first, the, uh, the first lesson in the third module of text. And each one of these modules has three topics. Now this first topic uh, for this module is the idea that words and images are BFFs. <laughs> <laughs> so really we're, what I, why I wanted to borrow this video was that it gets into more nuance about this trying to overcome this thinking that like, well, I used to use words and now I'm using images. So words are bad and images are good. Very, very much about how those two sides come together and really work together in our visual thinking. So here's a sneak peek of one of our days in the Agrabag Method and I certainly hope you enjoy it as a deeper dive into the retort. Welcome to module three, text. Now you may be thinking if this is a visual thinking course, why are we talking about text? Because as we discuss in these three lessons of topic number one is words plus images equals love. <laughs> words and images working together is a very beautiful thing. So I want to talk uh, in today's lesson about this idea of visuals being text being the old language that we're already familiar with and visuals being the new language that we're learning. Now, I do think this language metaphor works to a point and there are points where I, where I will use it, but I want to talk about sort of um, talk about how these things work together and what we can take from how we learn a language and apply it to how we learn visual thinking, this new language of imagery. So this chart behind me is split into quadrants and basically the left side of the page is focused on text and words, the right side of the page is focused on imagery, um, and then the top half of the page is new ways of working and the bottom half of the page is old ways of working. So I want to just hit on some main points I want you to keep in mind as throughout this text module, but throughout this course and how you think about the ways that words and images can be and it <laughs> can be BFFs, can be this big, beautiful heart in the middle of the chart uh, that they do really work together. So when I talk about language, there's definitely the sense of, you know, you have a, 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 a verbal vocabulary. Throughout this course, we're talking about building your visual vocabulary, you know, becoming more comfortable and fluent speaking 
metaphorically, in this visual way, that we feel more confident, we have more words in our vocabulary, um, we know the grammar of how different pieces of visual thinking fit together. That's very much my intention with the structure of the nine modules, is to really teach you that grammar. Think about that grammar as those meaningful choices we talked about in your welcome video the moment you signed up for this course. So there are things we can sort of, um, you know, transfer from this idea of, it, of uh, learning a verbal language into uh, this visual language, um, but it is not a direct translation. Um, it's not that for every word there is a icon. I think that's very binary thinking we get ourselves in um, as we learn this work. You think, oh, well, if I draw an acorn, you know, if I think, if I th instead of, uh, if I think the word acorn, I say the word acorn, therefore I must draw an acorn. And an acorn's a little seed from an oak tree, if that's a new vocabulary word for folks. I don't know why acorns popped in my head, but it did. <laughs> so that's an example of getting into that binary thinking of, well, the wor words are bad. And if I'm doing visual thinking, I have to use images, therefore, I, you know, should use this, um, I should draw an acorn instead of just writing the word acorn. Um, it is not a this or that, it's very much an and situation. And uh, there's certainly nothing wrong with writing the word acorn, even without a little icon of an acorn, no problem. Because if you do find yourself stuck in that loop of that binary thinking, that translation from word to images, that's when we get iconitis. It's when your icons are inflamed. <laughs> uh, it's definitely something I see a lot. You'll hear a little bit more about it tomorrow. It's when people get so fixated on having that image that correlates with every word that you get stuck when you have a more abstract concept and there isn't an easy visual for it. Um, so just beware that, you know, this isn't about being a, a this to this. It is about the and, and again, not a direct translation, and we really do want avoid, to avoid that iconitis, iconitis. Uh, too many icons, they get inflamed. <laughs> so over here on the left side, um, what I hear a lot of people talk about when they talk about visual thinking is this idea of, I'm writing too many words, that there's too many words on the page, and, there's no, there's no right answer about like what quotient of words there should be on the page. It very much depends on the type of work you're doing. For instance, if you're doing something like writing a paper, you want to cite your source and you know use the exact language because you're gonna quote that source or cite that source. But definitely in certain situations when you're working with people, you want to use their language and they may not have said something very briefly or succinctly. So the, again, it's not this, this thing that I can tell you that there's too many words. Um, I think a lot of times that comes from somebody who comes from this side of the, of the chart, from the word side, and they're really concerned that they're, they're defaulting back into this side and they're not using enough images. So that's that sense of, you know, I'm just kind of like falling back here um, and I have too many words. Now, there is a case where words are full sentences, drawing full sentences, putting full sentences in your drawings is slow and it takes up a lot of space on the page. So definitely a new way of thinking about words is that you really do want to think about distilling language. And that's definitely the whole next topic we will conquer, cover, conquer sounds a little aggressive. Um, the, next, the next topic will be distilling because we really wanna look at how do we chunk information? How do we find that relevant piece of text? You know, strip away what's not relevant. Yes, if there's, if there's things that are irrelevant in your drawing, that is too many words. If you cannot keep up with a live situation, because you're writing out full sentences. That could be too many words. If you truly have no space on your page for anything but words, that could be too many words. But again, it's all in relationship to what, how these two things work together and what the objective is. But we do want to work towards finding those relevant chunks of information and distilling down the language into succinct phrases. 
And that is because, for a couple things, one is distilling really, and we'll talk about this more next topic, distilling definitely, you're processing the information. We're not recording devices. So we don't, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't help us if we're doing our own personal note taking in a live situation, or if we're supporting a group. Um, it doesn't really serve us as individuals or the groups if we're acting like a recording device because the value we're bringing is what we're doing as we listen, as we process this information and we get it out of the page. Um, you know, get a tape recorder, use the recorder on your phone. Like, <laughs> like if you need a recording device, you've got plenty of options. Um, really, the value we bring is by listening and ascertaining what is most relevant, deciding what is most relevant, what's most useful to the objective at hand. So again, we do wanna shift away from default thinking and perhaps you know using full sentences because it is slow, because it takes up a lot of space, but really um, the new way of looking at language is distilling and chunking. Now let's look over at the visual side of the page, which, you know, which, which is why you're here. <laughs> It's to learn this, learn, or um, a lot of you already have a lot of great skills in visual thinking, to deepen, develop, strengthen your visual thinking skills. One thing I want you to know is that, come here, number seven, you already know more than you think. There is so much we understand as viewers, especially as culture gets more and more visual. You know, we take in so much visual information all the time that we are we are watching, we are reading. So again, using a um, verbal meta metaphor, a verbal parallel, you know, you look at an advertisement in a newspaper or a magazine, or you watch an ad on TV, you're reading that the whole time. And those advertisers have designed that piece of communication to deliver very specific messages. So there's a whole lot we know, but what we're doing here, what I'm so excited about, about teaching this, is that we're going from viewer to maker. So we're putting these, these um, this grammar of visual thinking in our own hands to make these images for ourselves, for our own work. Um, so we're going from passive consumer to active creator or maker. And big point here, a new way of thinking of visuals. So again, on this old, the bottom side of this being old, you already know more than you think from your experience. Again, we wanna shift from viewer to maker, but I think a very, very, very key point um, that you'll hear me say time and again, and you'll absolutely uh, see through this course and especially in the image module is, is this point that visual is greater than imagery. So this is an image of sort of this, you know, sweet little character that looks like a painter's palette with a face. Um, so that's sort of what that represents. But this drawing, this chart, this, you know, visual thing I've created to help convey these ideas has a lot more going on than just this image of this guy, the shape of this heart, and this kind of text character. You've got um, contrast between the white circles and the black page. You have a very specific color palette created and used consistently with, you know, numbers created in blue, some accents created in blue. There's scale, so we've got this very clear central piece here, and then these smaller details all on the same level, all in the same treatment, consistent choices um, going on. You've got the spatial relationship, so, you know, but like I said uh, uh, many times in the proximity module, a lot of the visual thinking we're doing is spatial. It's not just visual, because when we think visual, we think a picture. So this is a picture of this character, this is a picture of this character, and this is a picture of a heart. But here you've got a whole lot of spatial, uh, spatial information going on. You've got a whole lot of more broad visual information going on. Again, scale, color, all the names of our modules, proximity, all these things that we are, um, that uh, make those major components, those major modules of the course. So that is just sort of an introdu introductory lesson on this idea of how words and images really work together and it's an and, and that we can use language metaphor that we borrow from the verbal side um, and, and definitely borrow that for the visual side. Um, but I want you to know that there's so much you already know about visual language. 
Um, I'm sure already in these first two modules you've found parts of this that are familiar to you. So that is visual vocabulary you already have working for yourself. So for today's practice builder, I would love for you to make a drawing for yourself that is about just this. How do you perceive this interaction between words and images? And um, you know, think about what, what feels like your happy place, um, what feels less familiar, you know, what are the parts of this visual language that you really feel you already are speaking fairly fluently? Um, what are other parts you definitely feel like you want to um, practice and get more eloquent at uh, and uh, feel like you can really build your fluency and your confidence in visual thinking. So that is your practice builder. So please make a free form drawing about this idea of how do you see words and images working together, not just in your specific practice and how, what, you're, what you are building and strengthening in this course, but definitely also think about what are past experiences that inform where you are right now today and how you've seen words and images work together well or maybe work together badly. So that is today's lesson. Uh, I absolutely welcome questions and comments below. And by all means, I would love to hear any ideas that came to the forefront for you uh, in the exercise, drawing out your own ideas around words and images in this first topic of text.